hello guys welcome back to the dnn medical series in today's tutorial video i'll be looking on the blood grouping system now this system is very important for example if you're doing a blood transfusion to know your blood type because certain blood type reacts with others right it's also important in pregnancy especially in the case where a mother is resource negative which we will get into later and also sometimes it's an indication of paternity not directly but indirectly for example a mother cannot be o and a father a and the offspring is a b all right because in the cross o um can be o will be o o sorry a can be a a and a o so in the cross you can see that there is no way you can get a a b all right so there's, there's no b in either a or o o all right, so the antigens are present on the red blood cells, all right? So it can be A antigen or B antigen, right? And then in the plasma, you have the antibodies, which can be A antibodies or B antibodies, all right? Antibodies can be natural antibodies, such as your IgM. So you find these naturally in your body. So while you're developing, these also develop. And there are antibodies such as IgG antibodies, which... You develop after exposure to um, an antibody all right so for example if you're resource negative right you won't you won't have the anti D antibodies which is for resource but if you get exposed then you develop the IgG antibodies for resource but we'll explain that later on all right so the most common blood grouping system is your ABO resource blood grouping system so your blood type can be a b o and the resource is usually indicated by a positive or a negative all right positive means you have the d antigen negative means you just don't have it right so example your blood type would be a b for example that's the blood grouping system with the resource positive or resource negative all right so it's important for you to know that for blood group a b are usually those that are dominant all right so once you have a your blood type would be a or b your blood type would be b all right however o is always recessive to a b all right so you can have a o right but your blood type is a right in order for you to have an o blood type it needs to be o o all right so keep that in mind when you're Thinking about the possibilities, exam, especially sorry for exams, um, O is always a possibility for the blood type because of the recessive system. All right, before we move on, let's summarize the last thing that was said in the previous slide. So A, if you're blood group A, it can be AA allele or AO. If you're B, it will be the BB if it's dominant or BO. If it's AB, it's just AB. If you're O, you have two O alleles. So o. All right, so now we're going to move on to the blood grouping system, the antigen for each blood group, and the antibodies that are present. Now, to recap, remember, antigen is on your cells, red cells, right? And your antibodies is in your plasma. All right, that's important to note. So for blood group A, it will have A antigen right on its cells and then it will have anti b bodies right in its plasma so it's the opposite so if it has a antigen it has b plasma for blood group b now it would have what b antigen because the antigen represents the blood type right so b antigen and then it will have the opposite for the antibodies so it's anti a in its plasma if it's a b remember antigen is for the blood group so it have both a antigen and b antigen right and for antibodies it has no antibodies so none a b o now will have what no antigen because remember the antigen is a or b right but its antibodies it has both anti a and Right. So the most common blood group is your O and your A second 
least common is your AB, right? So if it's resource positive again, we'll have plus or minus for resource negative, but we look on the resource system separately. So for this, you should know that O is therefore the universal donor, right? And AB is the universal recipient. All right, so what this means is that if you're O, you can donate to all of the blood groups. All right, but if you're AB, you can receive from all the blood groups. But the drawback is that for AB, they can only donate to AB, and O, they can only receive from O. All right, let's have a recap before we look on who is able to donate to what group and who is able to receive from the next group. So remember that we said A, the antigen represents the blood group. So it has A antigen and the opposite for the plasma, which is anti B. Remember that B now would have B antigen and then the anti A antibodies. A, B will have both A and B antigen but no antibodies. O has no antigen, but has AB antibodies. All right, so let's look on the donation and receiving of blood. So A now, remember it has A antigen, right? So it can donate to, right? It can donate to itself, right? Because it's the same blood group. Also give AB, right? Because remember, AB has no antibody, so there be no reaction, but it has a antigen as well, so they can both um, donate. Now, for receiving, now remember, O is the universal donor, so O can donate to any blood group. So A can receive from O, and A can receive from itself. All right, so B is similar to A, so it will receive, sorry, from B, of course, it can receive from itself, and also a B kit, right? Because there is no anti um, B antibodies, it will be okay um, for donation. For receiving, remember O is always going to donate because it's a universal donor, all right? So it will receive from O, and of course, it can receive from itself, right? It can donate and receive from itself. Next one, A, B. Remember, AB now can only give to itself AB, right? It cannot donate to any other blood group because there will be interaction between these antigens and the antibodies of the other group. And it can receive from all blood types. So it's the universal recipient. Why? Because it has no antibodies in its plasma. So there be no interaction, anyone can give A, B. So O now can give to everybody, all right? So all blood types, because it's a universal donor, but it can only receive from itself, O, all right? So the key things to know is that O is donating to everyone. So everyone you can see will receive from O. A, B now is the universal recipient, so anyone can donate to A, B, as you can see. So once you know that, all you need to know is that A can donate to itself and receive from itself, and B can donate to itself and receive from itself, all right? Everything else comes clear and easier. Now we're going to look on the test for blood grouping system. So normally if you do a regular blood test or if you're in the lab, they can use the anti-IgM zero um, for testing. All right, so for blood group testing, agglutination indicates the presence of a particular antigen, all right? So you would use the anti sera IgM agent, right? And you will use anti-A anti B and anti D for your resource. Now for blood group A, 
right? If when you use the anti-ACE serum on the blood, it agglutinates, that indicates a positive test for your blood group A. All right, so A antigen is present. If there is no agglutination when anti B means there is no B antigen on its cell, right? That means that it's blood group A. So there's only the presence of the antigen A. For anti D, if it agglutinates, it just means that it's positive. If it doesn't, it's negative. All right, so that will tell if it's A positive or A um, negative, right? For blood group B now, what do you expect? Will it have antigen A? No, all right? So there will be no agglutination with anti-A. But for anti-B, because it has B antigen, there will be a reaction. So you would expect that it will give agglutination for this. And again, same for rhesus, positive or negative. For AB, what do you expect? It has both antigen, right? So for anti-A, it will agglutinate for anti-B it would agglutinate and again same for rhesus all right for blood group o will it have anti a reaction no because remember blood group has o has no antigen so it have a negative reaction no agglutination for the anti a or anti b reagent right and if it agglutinates it's positive for the anti d negative if there's no agglutination all right, so this is called the forward grouping system. So the forward grouping system, you're using the antibodies to test for the antigen. So for the reverse testing, we're testing for the antibodies that are present in the plasma. So basically, we're going to use the antigens present on the cell, which are the A and B antigen, to test which antibodies is present in the plasma. So if there is a positive reaction with a cells it means that it contains anti a cells right and if there is no b reaction it means that you only have anti a antibodies so your blood group would be b all right is a reverse because remember the antigen that is on the cell is the opposite to the one that is in the plasma so if you have anti a antibodies in your plasma your antigen must be B, all right so if there is presence of only the anti B antibodies right it means that you have group A cells on your antigen so your group A and for the reverse if you have both anti A and anti B it means that your blood group O because remember blood group O has both A and B antibodies but no antigens if there is no antibodies that are present, which blood group has no antibodies? The AB, right? It has both antigen but no antibodies. Then your blood group will be AB. All right? So the reversing testing is basically the opposite. So forward, looking for antigen. Reverse, looking for antibodies. All right? So to note, though, we're going to look on the rhesus blood group system. All right? So rhesus doesn't have a reverse group. Because if you're not rhesus positive, you don't have any natural occurring antibodies. All right. But rhesus is very important in pregnancy. All right. For example, if a mother is rhesus negative, right? Say, for example, your mother is RH negative. All right. But the father is rich rhesus positive. So the child now is rhesus positive. Right. So if the mother gets impregnated and she has a fetus growing inside of her which has rhesus positive there is a tendency of a reaction to occur because remember um the mother doesn't have the anti d antibody so it will be like foreign to her because she, she has no antibodies for the rhesus so what will occur is that the mother system will have a tendency to want to attack the baby system but remember in the first reaction it's the igm that is um, activated but the igm igm sorry does not activate your complement system and the igm is very big all right so the igm cannot 
pass the placenta. So if it cannot pass the placenta, then it cannot affect the baby in the first pregnancy. So the first pregnancy is just to, to have a reaction, develop the IgM. The IgM now is too big to pass the placenta, so it cannot attack the baby, right? And it doesn't affect the complementary system. However, if the mother should get pregnant a second time or a third time with a baby that is resource positive, the mother will now have developed the IgG antibodies, right? Because she has been exposed already. And remember, after exposure is the IgG. So after she exposed, the IgG is very small in comparison to the IgM. And this IgG can pass the placenta. Now, once it passes the placenta, it will attack the baby, right? And this can lead to miscarriage, right? But there are treatment um, for it. Once the mother has been exposed, then during pregnancy, they'll get medication um, to suppress this resource reaction. Right. Lastly, we're going to look on the Coombs reagent. So the Coombs reagent uses anti-human globin for testing. And there are two types of Coombs reaction. You have the direct and the indirect Coombs test. All right, so for the direct, we're going to look on that first. Is basically to detect the antibodies, right, present on the surface of the red cells. All right, so antibodies. So what the test does is you call it the patient sample. You centrifuge it to separate the plasma from the red cells. And then you're going to use a few drops of the red cells. Now, after you have your red cells, you're going to sensitize them, washing them to remove any unborn antibodies, right? And then you add the Coombs reagent, right? So if there is agglutination, this is an indication of a positive Coombs test. Now, positive Coombs test can be seen in hemolytic disease of the newborn, in autoimmune hemolytic anemia, in drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia and in hemolytic transfusion reactions. All right, so positive Coombs test, hemolytic disease of the firstborn, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia, or hemolytic transfusion reaction. All right, so let's move on to the indirect Coombs test. All right, so the indirect Coombs test also detects your antibodies, right? But this time not on the cell as the direct, but it looks on the antibodies in the plasma. So there are two stages to this reaction. So you're going to call it the patient serum and you're going to incubate it with group O red cells. So group O cells plus serum, right, are incubated, right? You wash it again to sensitize it and then Add the Coombs reagent, all right? So examine for your agglutination. Now, if there is agglutination, then this is also a positive indirect Coombs test. Positive um, indirect Coombs test can um, show the presence of autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Um, it can be that there is some cross-matching reaction that is taking place or there are some um, antibodies unusual antibodies that are present um, within the blood all right so when you're doing cross matching for example you're donating cells or plasma from a donor to a recipient it is important that you do cross matching to determine if there is any error in determining the blood group or if there is any clinical significant immune antibodies in the plasma that may react with the re recipient, right, before you do um, that transfusion. All right, so that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Goodbye.